In this lecture, we're going to learn how to find an extrema of a functional with conditions. And before that, let's take a look at how to find an extrema of a functions with conditions. We're going to explain this by using one example. A manufacturer wants to maximize the volume of a circular tank subject to the condition that the area of the material used for the tank is limited or constant. Let's define the mathematics model of this problem. Assuming that we have a circular tank, the radius of this tank is r, and we're going to maximize the volume of the tank given the condition of the area is a constant. We know the volume for a circular tank can be calculated by using the area of the bottom surface times the height. The height of the tank is defined as a h. The volume can be calculated using pi r square times h subject to the constraint of the area s that is equal to 2 pi i square plus 2 pi r times h and this is the constant let's assume the constant is equal to c and we have two different methods to solve this problem the first method is called a direct method and the second method is a Lagrangian multiplexer method so let's look at the first method, direct method. Let's copy the volume and the surface area equation over. We know the volume is equal to pi r squared times h. And it's a function of uh, two variables, r and h. If we want to calculate a maximum or extrema of a function, it requires us to take a derivative of this function with respect to one variable and set it to zero. Here we have two variables, r and h. We want to replace one variable by the other. And from the constraint we have here, we can find h from this constraint. h is equal to 1 over 2 pi r times capital C minus 2 pi r square. And we can submit h to the volume function. And then we find it equal to pi r square times h h is equal to 1 over 2 pi r times c minus 2 pi r square we can further simplify it to give us r over 2 times c minus 2 pi r square from the necessary condition for optimum we know that dv over dr is equal to 0 and then we can find we need to use the chain rule to find a dv over dr that gives us 1 over 2 times c minus 2 pi r square plus r over 2 times minus 4 pi r this is equal to half c minus pi r square minus 2 pi r square that is minus 3 pi r square and let it to 0 then from here we can find the optimal r and we'll represent it by using r star is equal to square root of uh, c over 6 pi and we can also find a volume the maximum volume can be calculated by using the volume expression which is uh, r star over 2 times c minus 2 pi r star square that will give us 1 third of c times square root of c over 6 pi and if we want to know whether v star is a uh, optimum or minimum we need to find uh, the second derivative of, uh, of v with respect to r the second derivative of v with respect to r is equal to so we take a set, another derivative of uh, this expression over here because this is a dv over dr take a derivative with this with respect to r that will give us negative 6 pi r and if we evaluate this at uh, the value of r star this will give us the second derivative of v with respect to r evaluated r star is equal to negative 6 pi r star 
and we know r star is greater than zero, so we find the second derivative is less than zero. It implies that this will give us a maximum. In Lagrange multiplier method, we're going to define a Lagrangian function. The Lagrangian function L can be defined as V plus lambda G, and we just uh, v is equal to pi r square. G is the constraint function, which is written in the form g is equal to zero. Uh, from this constraint, we move c to the left-hand side, and uh, the right-hand side becomes zero, which gives us a function g is equal to this. We plug g back into the Lagrangian, which gives us this expression. Now, the Lagrangian is a function of three variables. We have r, h, and a lambda. Now to find the extrema of a function v is equivalent to find the extrema of a Lagrangian function l. Since l is a function of three variables, it requires partial l over partial r is equal to zero. And if we simplify that, take a partial differential of l with respect to r, the first term will give us 2 pi r h, and this term will give us 4 pi r times lambda, and this term will give us 2 pi h, that is equal to 0. At the same time, partial l over partial h is equal to 0, and we can simplify that. It will give us pi r squared plus 2 pi r lambda is equal to 0, and partial l over partial lambda is equal to 0 will give us the equal this expression, which is simply the constraint function g is equal to zero. So from the second expression over here, we can find the relationship between lambda and r. We can find that lambda is equal to negative half r. And from the equation three, we can find the relationship between h and r. We find that h is equal to 1 over 2 pi r times c minus 2 pi r squared. And then we can submit a 4 and a 5 into the equation 1 to solve for r. And remember, this r will be the optimum r. We find r is equal to square root of c over 6 pi. And given optimum r, we can find the optimal volume. Optimal volume v star is equal to this we submit r star to this equation that give us this is c minus 2 pi r square 2 pi r square that is um, one third of c so this is two thirds of c divided by two that give us one third of c times r star r star is square root of c over six pi let's just summarize about how to find a dream of a functions with the conditions. First, we need to write the constraint function into this form, with g of x is equal to some function is equal to zero. And then we're going to construct the Lagrangian function. The Lagrangian function is defined as a, the function fx plus lambda transpose times gx. Then you need to convert the problem of finding the optimum of fx to the problem of uh, finding the optimum of uh, the Lagrangian function of L. From the necessary condition, it requires partial L over partial x is equal to zero. At the same time, since we introduce a new variable lambda, partial L over partial lambda is equal to zero. And uh, remember, partial L over partial lambda, looking at from here, is simply gx is equal to zero. So we can extend the same concept we learned for functions to functionals. Let's look at the conclusion for extrema of functionals with conditions. Similar to what we had before, we were trying to find the extrema of a functional j in this form. j is equal to the integration from t0 to tf, a function of v. The constraint can be written in the function of g, which is a function of x 
x dot time t is equal to zero. Uh, we can define an augmented functional j a. j a is equal to the integration from t zero to t f, the Lagrangian function. And this Lagrangian is defined the same way as how we did what uh, what we did for functions, which is equal to v plus lamp champs worth times g, and uh, apply the Euler Lagrangian equation on um, the functional j a. We got the conclusion that it requires partial l over partial x minus the derivative of uh, partial l over partial x dot is equal to zero. At the same time. Since we introduce the co-state variable lambda partial L over partial lambda minus the derivative of partial L over partial lambda dot is equal to zero. And the second expression is simply the constraint G is equal to zero. Let's look at one example. So in this example, we're going to minimize the performance index J with the boundary conditions subject to the condition x dot is equal to negative x plus u. And if we look at this constraint, or this condition, it is a, a dynamic equation, which is a differential equation. If we look at the components in this problem, we have the dynamics, we have the performance index. At the same time, we have a, the boundary conditions. It is a standard optimal control problem. Let's see how we solve this problem. First, we need to identify what is our function v? In this problem, the function v is uh, what we have inside this integral. So that is v is equal to x squared plus u squared. And since x and u, they are all function of uh, time t, for the rest of the uh, calculation, uh, we are going to omit parenthesis t. And the function g is the dynamic equation and we'll need to write it in a standard form, g that is equal to, put everything onto the left-hand side, move, we'll move everything from the right-hand side to the left, so that will give us x dot plus x t minus u t that is equal to zero. Then we can define the Lagrangian. So remember, the Lagrangian is defined as uh, this form. So we know that Lagrange is a function of x, x dot, lambda. Um, to, make, to simplify the writing, we just uh, omit that. That is equal to L plus lambda times g. And uh, since we only have a one constraint, so lambda is a scalar. And we can write it out. x squared plus u squared plus lambda times x dot plus x minus u. Now we convert the problem to find the extrema of this functional j to be a problem to find the extrema of this augmented functional j a is equal to the integration of a Lagrangian function dt. By using the theorem of extrema of functionals, it requires, it need to satisfy the Euler equation Let's write it out. And remember, L now is a function of x, u, and x dot. So partial L over partial x give us 2x plus lambda. And a partial L over partial x dot is equal to lambda. I submit this to an Euler equation. It will give us. 2x plus lambda minus the time derivative of uh, this lambda dot, which is lambda dot, is equal to zero. It also requires a partial L over partial U. And from the expression over here, partial L over partial U, that is a 2U minus lambda. And partial L over partial U dot is equal to zero. That will give us 2U minus lambda is equal to zero. The third equation, partial L over partial lambda 
minus d dt partial L over partial lambda dot is equal to zero. This is simply give us the constraint equation, which is a uh, x dot plus x minus u is equal to zero. To simplify the writing, I omitted this function t. Now we can solve these three equations to find the optimal function x, lambda, and u. Let's call this e equation 1, call this equation 2, and we'll call this equation 3. And we can find that the equation 2 is pretty easy to solve. Let's solve the equation 2 first. And uh, from the equation 2, we can find the relationship between lambda and uh, u. So we find that u is equal to half lambda. Or we can f replace the lambda by u. Lambda is equal to 2u. Uh, we'll see which one to use after we simplify it furthermore. And uh, from equation 1, we have the relationship between x and lambda. And from the equation 3, we find a relationship between u and uh, x. Let's solve for u from the third equation. From equation 3, we can find u is equal to x dot plus x. And since lambda is equal to 2u, and we can further replace the lambda by x, it becomes 2 times x dot plus x. Now we can submit all this to the first equation. And then we get 2x plus lambda minus lambda dot is equal to 0. So we're going to replace lambda by using x2 times x dot plus x. So we have a 2x dot plus x here. And the lambda will be the same thing replaced by that. It becomes minus 2 times x double dot plus x dot, which is equal to 0. We can simplify this equation a little bit. So we get rid of cancel 2 on two sides. So we uh, then we move everything to the right hand side, which give us x double dot. This is minus x dot plus x dot. So that is uh, cancelled. Then we have uh, x plus x, that's a 2x. And 2x is moved to the right hand side to become minus 2x is equal to 0. This equation allows us to solve x. So we find uh, x optimum is equal to c1 times e to the power of negative square root of 2t plus c2 times e to the power of positive square root of 2t. So now, now we find an optimal state. In the solution we have a two constant c1 and c2 and we will need to find that by using the boundary conditions. Let's work on that on the next page. We'll continue from here. And this is the optimal solution, x star. The boundary condition tells us x0 is equal to 1 and x1 is equal to 0. So let's see what they are. x0 will submit a 0 there, so this is a c1 plus a c2. And x1 when time t is equal to 1, that'll give us c1 e to the power of negative square root of 2 plus c2 times e to the power of square root of 2. So from here we can solve c1 and c2. And after we solve for c1 and c2, we'll be able to find optimal control. From equation 3, we can find the optimal control is equal to x dot plus x. u that is equal to x dot plus x. That will give us, so time derivative of this, that will give us negative square root of 2 c1 plus square root of 2 c2 plus x. x is uh, this. So this is uh, our optimal control. And we'll label it as a u star. And same thing here. This is evaluated at uh, optimal control. We can further group them together. That is equal to 1 minus square root of 2 times c1 times e to the power of ne negative square root of 2t plus uh, 1 plus 1 plus the square root of 2 times e to the power of uh, square root of 2t. That concludes this topic.